Hi, in this video I will present you the exponential coordinates on simply connected uh, nilpotent Lie groups. Uh, the main result will be that in these coordinates, the left translations and the right translations are polynomial maps that preserve the Lebesgue measure. Let's start. We already saw in the previous video that uh, simply connected uh, Lie groups that are nilpotent have the property that the exponential map from the Lie algebra to the group is a diffeomorphism globally in the whole, uh, the, as defined in the whole uh, Lie algebra. Mm? So it's injective and subjective, smooth with the inverse uh, map that is smooth. Mm? Okay, so let me, let me rephrase it. So if G is um, simply connected, nilpotent, Lie group, then the exponential map from the Lie algebra of the group, which we might denote it as gothic G, to G, this map is a diffeomorphism. Mm. Okay, so we will use this fact to uh, put coordinates because now this, uh, this Lie algebra is just a vector space. So we can define, we can fix a basis and um, identify it, this space as, as some Rn, okay? So let's define um, exponential coordinates. So we fix, uh, so we have G, the Lie algebra of a simply connected nilpotent uh, group, Lie group G. And then we consider x1, xn uh, basis of this Lie algebra. And then we consider the map phi from Rn to G that to every n t associate the exponential of t1x1 plus plus tnxn. So in other words, we have to, uh, we, we use the basis to identify Rn with the Lie algebra, and then we compose with the exponential map. So this map is called exponential, exponential, Uh, coordinates or coordinate map hmm, with respect to the basis x1, xn. Okay, so uh, I would like to um, present you some properties of this uh, exponential coordinates. Hmm. Uh, let's now remember what, what is the meaning of having a, a, a simply connected Lie algebra and see how we can choose a special basis of the, this Lie algebra. So let's recall that if G is a simply connected nilpotent group, then we have the Lie algebra G is, um, is nilpotent. We can take this as a definition of the Lie, connected Lie group being important. And by definition, this means that if we take the lower central series, so the iterated commutators, G and then G, G, then eventually these subspaces are going to be trivial, zero. This is the definition of a nilpotent Lie algebra. Hmm? Now let's consider this uh, uh, this flag of subspaces and construct uh, a special basis for G adapted to this flag. Hmm? So let's construct a special basis 
of G. Okay. How do we do it? Uh, we were going, we wanted to, 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 do a, to have a basis that is adapted to this uh, to lower central series. So let's remember that the element of the central series are called G, K. Hmm? So this is G1, G2, G3, so on. Um, okay, so what we do, we do the following. So we choose for, for each K, a subspace uh, VK that is in direct sum uh, with GK plus one inside GK. Okay. Actually, it's easy to see that if these are um, uh, all, all this inclusion, they are strict until the, we have a, a first one GS non zero, and then the next one is zero. So all of them are strict. Um, and then uh, this space is uh, for, for S, for K between uh, one and S these are uh, strictly uh, different than GK. So we can choose a subspace, okay? But it's not so different, so, so, so important. Okay. What's important is that this space is a subset of this. Hmm? Okay, so let's choose this, this VK. So what is it that we have? Um, pay attention because these subspaces will come again later in the theory of, uh, of important groups. So what we have is that, um, so okay, G is just, we can see it as the sum of all these subspaces uh, to S, uh, as, as well, GK, GK is just VK plus it's the tail of this sequence. Mm -hmm. and, and G, we can also write it as V1 plus, plus VK minus one plus GK. Mm -hmm. We have this, this decomposition. Okay, I open a side remark for uh, that, for those that know already what's a grading, and maybe you will under, if you don't know what's a grading, you will understand later when we discuss gradings. Mm -hmm. So, a warning here is that the that the composition uh, of the VJ is not a grading, namely. It's, it's not true that VI bracket VJ is inside VI plus J, right? So we, we don't, okay. So I'm saying, this, this would be a grading and we might have that this is different, right? Uh, let me make it clear. So maybe we might have, we might have that this is not included. Hmm? Still, what we have, um, we have that if you take the bracket of VI with VJ, remember VI is a subset of GI, VJ is a, is a set of GJ, and this is easy to see that it's a subset of GI plus J. So this is a filtration. And this is VI plus, uh, sorry. VI plus J plus VI plus J plus one up to VS. Okay. Now let's go back. So we have this, um, this, decompo this decomposition of the space. So we choose an ordered basis x1 up to xn adapted adapted to the decomposition the decomposition uh, that we have g equal v1 plus plus vs namely um, the first one will make a basis of v1 the second group will make a, a basis of V2 and so on. Now, for 
each K, uh, let's define the set I K to be the span of the tail from X K up to X S. Hmm? Now, I'll make you notice and I'll prove some properties of these sets. One, this set IK are ideals of G, namely uh, IK bracket with G is a subset of IK. Actually, something even stronger is true. Uh, that if you do this bracket, I, K, bracket G, then this is even contained in I, K plus one, which of course, by definition, is easy to see there's a subset of I, K. So the, the, this being obvious, this property is stronger than this one, okay? So I claim that this is true for this spaces I, K defined on an adapted with the, with the adaptive basis, okay? So let's prove it. Okay, so let's remember IK is, uh, by definition, is the span from XK to XN. Uh, sorry, I put NS also there. No, of course, we only mentioned N. S is a step. So this is N. Mm -hmm. So this is the set, okay. So, uh, let's take a, a vector um, xk in Ej. Mm -hmm. So what we have, we have that um, ik is a subset of Vj plus uh, Vj plus 1 plus up to Bs. And this is equal to Gj. Okay. Now, let's, let's consider the bracket Ik, bracket with G. Now, Ik, instead of Ik, we can put Gj, bracket G. And this is by definition of the central series, over central series, this is G, J, G plus one, which is V J plus one up to V S. Now, what's happening for K to um, K plus one? So either the next vector of the basis is still in the same VJ or is in the next one, J plus one. But however, in other, in both cases, in both cases, then um, G, IK, uh, IKG, IKG, this bracket, and then it's contained in, as we said before, is in this one. So in Vj plus one Vs, which is inside um, I k plus one. Because um, in, in this case, this, are actually, this is actually an equality. Um, in this case, uh, this space has also the, the terms v, vj. Okay. So we proved the property that we want. Okay, good. So we have this property um, uh, and it's going to be so important that uh, this, uh, the bases that have this property really deserve a name. And let me give the definition, the term, the term that I want to use. So a basis x1, xn of a nilpotent the algebra G is a Malchev basis, 
check basis. Actually, I should write an ordered basis. So it comes with, a, with an order, first, second, third element. If for all k from one to n, if one defines ik to be the span of, so for xk up to xn, these sets are uh, Okay, for it, this, this, the space, the set is an ideal of G, for G. Hmm? Okay, so what we just proved is the following. So, first of all, Malchev basis exists, exists on an important the algebras. And, and second, actually, if you have a match of bases, then the idea the property of being an ideal is improved with the property that the bracket between IK and G is contained in i k plus one, which of course is a subset of i k, hmm? where, where, where this i is, is this ideal. Hmm? So this is what we actually proved. Hmm? Okay, so now why it's important to consider much of basis is because it will make us prove very easily the main theorem that we want to prove theorem. So this is the main theorem of this video. Suppose you have a simply connected uh, Lie group and then we consider phi from Rn to G exponential coordinates. Coordinates with respect to some basis not necessarily a match of basis. Of G. Mm. Uh, so in these coordinates, each left translation translation um, likewise, write a translation. So let, let's, let's just discuss about left translation. So, uh, so you identify the space, the, the group G with Rn. So now we have uh, the left translation can be seen as a map from Rn to itself, and then has uh, Jacobian determinant, Jacobian determinant equal to one. Okay, maybe let me also say that um, this map is is actually is a polynomial. So this is a polynomial map. Map that has Jacobian determinant equal to one constantly. Constantly equal to one at every point. So as a consequence, so in particular, the Lebesgue measure on Rn is preserved by uh, left translations 
and write translations. Okay, let's prove this theorem. Proof. Okay, now we will use much of basis. So first, so much of basis exists since much of basis exist and since uh, the change of basis uh, that are linear linear change of basis preserve the jacobian so since linear uh, change of basis preserve um, jacobians We may assume uh, that uh, the basis x1, xn, for which we take the coordinate, the exponential coordinate, is a match of basis. For Lynch. <laughs> okay, and recall. We are going to have the property i k g inside i k plus one. Okay, where i k is the span of the tail of the uh, basis, and we are going to use the bacon campbell hauser formula. Not in the precise um, expression, but just as the fact that it exists. We'll see now. Okay, so uh, so we multiply by an element g. So let g be an element. We can write it as exp of sum over k from one to n of u k x k for some u k in R, and we take also a variable now h exponential sum of tk uh, xk. Uh, no, maybe let's call the index differently. Uh, m, m, xm. Hmm? Okay, now let's consider the product. Then, so g h g times h but the, so this is x of uh, sum of u k x k x of t m x m okay let's apply big and Campbell out the form so this is x this is y now Beck and Campbell Ausdorf tells us that this can be written as the exponential of the sum of the two vectors plus a series in the brackets of x and y. But we are in a Lie, in an important Lie algebra, so the series becomes a polynomial. So this polynomial. polynomial of iterated bracket brackets in x and y mm -hmm. and we have polynomial because because of nilpotency Okay, so in, in in this case, what do we have? We have, so x is um, sum of u k x k, y is the sum of t m x m plus, and then there are going to be, to be elements that have brackets of the x k's with 
x m's. Hmm? Now, okay, so what we understand is that, first of all, this function, when we consider exponential coordinates, this is going to be polynomial in, in the variables u, k, and t, k. Because in these brackets, we only have finitely many terms, and all of them are polynomial in u and t. Hmm? So the product really is, uh, is uh, polynomial. So from here, so product is polynomial. Good. So now let's try to, to see what, um, uh, what we have as a function of, of the variable u and t. Actually, now what we want to do, we want to take the derivative um, in, uh, in tk, okay? So now let's fix tk, fix, uh, sorry, m, m, fix an m, okay? Um, fix m. And now what we want, we write this is, okay, it's exp of, okay, still the sum uk, um, xk plus sum of t m x m. Um, now, what we are going to have, we have to have things that are not depending on t m plus plus things or terms depending on tm, okay? Just some of these brackets will have tm, some of not. But what are those elements? tm appears if I have the bracket with, TM, with xm, hmm? which means that now, if I, in this, all these terms, they're going to be in the space generated by the bracket with g, with some vectors, with x, m. This space is inside g, i, uh, j, okay. Uh, here we say that x, m is in the ideal, um, actually it's, it's in i, m, it's the same. M, I, M, okay. And this is inside I, M plus one because of the property of the uh, matchup basis. Hmm? Okay, let's keep in mind this. And what about this other term? Let's change color. These other terms here, there's no dependence on TM. So when I take the derivative in TM of this thing, then this is going to be zero. This not depends on T M. Okay, so now let's write the Jacobian. So I'm going to write the columns of derivatives with respect to each variable T M. So now, if we write uh, the left translation in coordinates, exponential coordinates, and we calculate the differential, what do we have? Now, I claim that on diagonal, we are going to have a lot of one. Now let's fix some K, and I will explain also we have one. Okay. So fix K, okay? So this is position K. Position K. In the position K, what we have, we have, so we have to consider uh, the derivative respect to, sorry, not k okay, m, we call it dtm. In this position here, what we have, we have that, okay, when we take the derivative respect to tm, we have in the, in the um, uh, direction of xm, we have a one in the derivative. Okay, here there is no dependence on tm. Here there is no dependence on tm. And then here we might have some things. 
But these objects see, is, uh, are vectors inside EM plus one. So which means, first of all, there is, no there is nothing in the direction of XM. And all the objects that there are, are in the span of the next vectors, okay? So which means that, okay, so we are going to have, okay, this is, so see, see, all of the, all of this was um, associated to IM. It says sm something smaller, this is associated with IM plus one. And then what we have is that on the nth column, we have a one, some zeros maybe, if there is some extra room, and then we have things uh, only in the part of IM plus one. In particular, which means that we have one in the diagonal and zero all above. So what we have, we have a big matrix with zero in the upper diagonal, upper, yeah, upper um, matrix. We have one in the diagonal and some things below, okay? There, therefore, uh, the determinant of this matrix is equal to one at every point. Hmm? And Okay, this is a general calculus fact. If you have a map with Jacobian one, it and this is also a diffeomorphism, huh? uh, it preserves the measure. So LG preserves, so it's measure preserved. Okay, end of the proof that in exponential coordinates, uh, right translations and left translations preserve the Lebesgue measure. If you like the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button. This will also suggest the course to other people. If you want to see more videos on Sabriman and Geometry, please subscribe to the channel, clicking below. Bye.